Good afternoon. So seeing this, I'm inspired. The people on the cliff that were watching, whether they were fellow wingers or other sports, wind sports, wind surfers, surfers, just stopping by to check it out, or tourists from out of town all had the same opinion. Like, wow, like this is really cool to watch. And this one kid was saying, oh, here comes the blue guy. Here comes the guy in yellow again. And, you know, talking to his dad and he was super stoked. And I was super stoked just watching. And it inspired me. I was like, man, I want to get out there. I need to get a smaller board and and learn how to to ride at this high level in this rough water. And so that's what I did. Now I'm super stoked. I can't wait to get back there. And on the other end, seeing like whether it's people who are brand new or intermediate or, or whatever level we're at, regardless of age or ability, seeing the full spectrum out there, that, that sends the message to me that this is a safe place to be a beginner, to flail, to be, you know, a kook for whatever word we want to use to describe being a beginner or struggling or flailing or just falling all over the place or just having fun, even not even trying to do it well, just being out there. But it, for me, it, it sends the message that it's okay to just go and experiment and basically to be myself. And it's kind of ironic, or to me, it seems a huge contrast. Cause like surfing Fort Point, my experience there was, it wasn't a safe place to flail or to be a beginner or an outsider, whatever definition that is. And it just wasn't safe period to, to try stuff, to do anything that wasn't out of whatever the, the norm was considered. Where out here I see kids of all ages, all levels doing both incredible stuff and beginner stuff. And, and it's okay. You can just go out and do it. And everyone's happy to, to share in the vibe and be stoked. I even had a experience down in a surf town where I was so in the, the culture of, of not being okay to flail that I was out at a popular, more advanced spot. It was a good day and I took off on a wave and I only went a little way and then I flailed and, and blew the wave and I, I felt bad and I even apologized to this one guy. I was like, oh man, I blew it. And he turned and said to me, he said, hey, it's your wave to blow. And th those were extremely rare words that I hardly ever heard have heard at surf towns. And so to hear that, it, it, I don't know how many years it took before it finally settled in that like, Hey, we're all out here having fun. That's the whole point. And, and so whatever I want to do on that wave or don't do on that wave, it's up to me. And that, that's what I love about wind sports. And especially what I've, my experience in the wing foiling is that it's okay. You can go out there and, and flail or, or mess up or, you know, I see, you know, there's this term called a kite mare where people either have bad experiences or do something really gnarly that almost gets people hurt or people do get hurt. And it, it's all welcome. It's, it's something part of the process of just being a human and being alive and doing something new is, you know, there's going to be flailing. There's going to be mistakes. It's okay. One of my teachers said to me that every human has value. The fact that we're born and alive and here is proof. We don't need any certification, no approval, we are valuable, and it's up to the people around us to see that value, to welcome it, encourage it, and, and almost to the point of demanding that we bring our value to the table, whether it's ripping and putting on a show or, or being an elder who knows everything and being able to share decades of wisdom or, or being the guy on the tiny board doing stuff that nobody else is doing and, and sending the message that, wow, it is possible to go out here on a tiny board and do things that look great and feel good. And it, so it's, it, we all have value. I once went to check out a dojo and take a look at what was going on and what they were doing there and what the style was. And when I walked in, I, I looked around and I saw that pretty much everyone in there was in their 20s, maybe 25 max. And the instructors were 30s, if that. And it was very workout intensive kind of work to you throw up kind of a routine and and that just seemed to be the vibe like push hard and and being in my 40s I, I just thought to myself this is not the place for me there's no old people here there's no young people here this this just isn't a, a a village type thing where everyone can can be here and do whatever they want to do at any stage of life so I left and found another studio where it was the exact opposite there were people of all ages from kids on up to like 70 year olds and, and it's 
women, men, all ages, you know, genders, abilities, whatever, everyone was welcome. And it immediately sent the message that this is a safe place to do whatever I want, to be whoever I want to be, to be myself. And that was a really refreshing thing. And, and what I didn't know and what I learned over time is that that environment allowed everyone to thrive, to really do some really hard stuff, to try experimental things, to do things that, that might be scary in another environment, and to really have that growth and, and to push through to other levels and, and really be the, fully myself. And that's been my experience at wing surfing. It's just often go to the beach and see people of all ages, sometimes not even going in the water, but you see plenty of gray hairs, men, women, children, kids, you know, everyone's out there. And even I've seen couples out there with their babies trading off. And that, that sends to me like, oh, hey, I can bring my son down here. It's a, it's a cool place. It's a family vibe. There's fathers and kids going out together. It's, it's just really refreshing. And it was the kind of vibe that I needed. Reminds me of a story I he I've heard several times that our ancestors, regardless of what part of the planet they were on, they only played games where everyone won. There were, there were no losers. If, if the goal was to beat people or to win and have other people lose, they wouldn't play it. They wanted everyone, you know, their brothers, their sisters, whoever was playing, you know, aunties, uncles, mamas, papas, kids, they didn't want them to feel excluded and like they weren't good enough and, all, and have that, you know, like that crushing defeat kind of thing. And so they wouldn't even play a game like that. The goal for them was to keep playing, not to win or beat anybody, but to keep playing. And that's what I see when I watch Johnny or whoever it is out there, but everyone's having fun. The goal is to keep playing, to keep flying, to be able to wing foil for, you know, I'm in my 40s and I've seen guys out here in their 70s. And I know in surfing and I've seen guys in 80s, 90s. So that tells me I have, you know, another 30, 40 years to keep doing this. And, and it's inspiring. Just, just seeing someone with gray hair out there doing what they do, it lets me know that this is I have time, you know, this is something that I can invest in and it's a safe investment because it, it's going to last probably the rest of my life. Even today when I showed up at the beach, I didn't have any faith that it was going to be good. I was here yesterday and the wind was really funky. It was really hard to get up with the current and just the way the wind was. And, and so I kind of gave up and then I came and I went and checked and I see everyone out and I'm like, oh man, it's so good. And it didn't even bother me that I wasn't out there or I'd, or I'd you know, by the time I did get there, it might be over. I just got my camera and went and filmed, and and it was awesome. I enjoyed, there's this thing called compersion, where we feel the joy of watching or, or seeing someone else's joy as if we're enjoying the thing ourselves. And that's why I felt filming on the cliff watching these guys. I was stoked. I was watching Johnny and everyone else do these carves and tight turns and or just going straight and or hauling butt or doing big airs. And I was feeling the same kind of rush and the feeling of like, man, that's that felt good. It was fun to watch. It was exciting. And also the, the flip side of that, of as far as like participation, I could sit on the cliff and film and feel valued. Afterward, everyone asked me, where's the footage? I want to see the footage. You get some good footage. And so I feel valued just not even doing anything. I'm just sitting on the cliff. And then... Uh, my friend Al was there too, and he's watching his son Kai, and, and we're all just watching, having a good time, being what he said, support. And so it's like, it's an inclusive thing, even if we're not out in the water, we can all be in it together, even if we're not in the same arena, you know, so to speak. So that's that's what I love about sports like this, where they're just activities, life in general, where everyone is welcome, and there's a place for everyone, regardless of where we're at or what we're doing. A friend asked me why I don't surf anymore, or why I foil. And I said, you know, the first thing that came to my mind, I, long rides, high speed, I'm able to do tight cars that I couldn't do on any other board. And then on reflecting on it, thinking about it, that the real reason, those reasons brought me to foiling and have me stoked on it. And at the same time, why I'm staying in foiling and why I haven't gone back to surfing on a surfboard or, or a shortboard is because of the community, of the, the attitude of, of, I just got tired of that, that my wave kind of vibe. And, and being a foiler, it's much more of an inclusive, welcoming 
can share waves. There's plenty of room, that kind of thing. And, and that's, that's what I love about wing surfing. This idea came to me, maybe it was a dream or a fantasy. This idea that everyone in, in my martial arts dojo would go out to say a localized surf break and we'd be on whatever, wave storm, soft tops, uh, boogie boards, you know, whatever gear we could go on and just kind of take over or ignore the the rules of, of localism or, or whatever the the hierarchy is. And as a kind of a point to, to show how um, like fleeting or, or pointless it is to try to dominate in that way because it, it doesn't last. There's always somebody bigger, stronger can come along and and take over or, or push you out or push someone out. And, and then ironically, here we are at Four Point and there's dozens of wing foilers out. And, and one, there was one surfer out today, maybe one. And so in a way, we kind of took over without having to take over. It's just a, a more welcoming, friendly vibe just showed up without, without having to do any of that. For me, it was a, a lesson in letting go of, of what I want or, or being careful what I wish for. And that I, I don't want to be stuck surfing with, with narrow minded views and and hierarchy and people trying to dominate each other. I'd rather let go of that and move on to what I'm doing now, which is wing foiling. And it's it's not the wing or the foil, it, it's the it's the approach, the way of looking out at the ocean and seeing this limitless expanse of waves everywhere. And and essentially unlimited. It's impossible to ever fill up this bay with people and even if it does there's a whole ocean just outside the gate with thousands of miles of waves to be ridden so that's for me that's like that huge abundant mindset that like there's waves everywhere why are we fighting we don't need to fight let's just go get a wing and a foil and we can ride the whole thing it's it's everywhere limitless and we can do it together and have fun. And we can bring the kids and we can bring grandma and grandpa or they can stay on the beach or whatever they want to do. Everyone is welcome. We can ride whatever gear we want. We can, nobody's going to make fun of us or laugh at us because we try something new. This is, a, this is the vibe here where you can try stuff new. You can do different things. It's okay. A friend said to me the other day that Chrissy is where the best guys are and that just by being out and around them, the skills or whatever we want to call it will rub off. And I found that certainly to be true, at least just watching the high level at the high level spot and seeing what's possible and, and seeing the gear they're on and watching how they move inspires me to try new stuff. Like if I go to other parts of the bay or, or go off to a lonely spot where no one's there and I'm just kind of doing my thing, it's easy to get in kind of a, uh, a same old thing or, or not, or get locked into whatever I'm doing. Whereas it's impossible watching this for me to deny that what's capable on the smaller board. I mean, watching this kite foiler, he's moving around like his board isn't there because it's tiny. So yeah, I can't ride a board that small, but I can ride a board close to this small or at least proportional to my weight. So that's that's the other thing I love about this kind of open welcoming environment where everyone's sharing and and showing people what they're doing and not not trying to hide it or push anybody away or keep it a secret or something we can all come and and watch and and just so that's i'm re super fired up on wing foiling after watching this because like man i don't think i could do turns like this on a big board with this rough water dragging a wing behind me. It, it, there's just too much going on. It's, it's a lot of moving parts. It's pulling me this way and that way. And I, I had been trying sinker boards and was having trouble. And it, they were just, it was just flail city and really small and discouraging. And so seeing this pushed me to like keep trying, to keep trying. And, and then my friend Jeff had some new boards. So I went and tried them and like, boom, finally it, it just clicked like the right recipe or, or the right gear for me showed up and all of a sudden 
there was, yeah, some learning curve and all that, but then it was a huge game changer. Now I'm like so pumped. I'm like, yes, I can't wait to go try all the surf spots and the, and the, and to be out there mixing it up. So I'm, I'm super pumped and, and just, Again, for me, the lesson that it drove home is, is the value of participation and getting together and, and doing things as a, a tribe, village, community, whatever we want to call it, but just getting out there and mixing it up. It, 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 there's, there's something about doing things together that, that makes it more than the sum of the parts, you know, like some kind of a geometric, uh, you know, multiplication where everything expands beyond what we think it can. And so that's been my experience and and it's really fun and i i couldn't tell you how many times i've pulled up to fort point i mean i used to live a few blocks away so i pull up the fort point parking lot and i would just look at the wave and the surf and see really crowded not that many waves like aggressive kind of thing and and i would eventually after not being able to see what looked like a fun way to be out there i would give up and go home but here i come and watch this and all I see are waves everywhere. There's possibilities that are, just seem limitless. There's the, the wave itself at Fort Point. There's the wind swell out there. And then further out, there's all kinds of boat wakes to hop on. And, and, just, and then there's shallow spots where all of a sudden it'll start breaking. There's deep water spots where you get these big rollers. You can go outside the gate. And, and one of the things that really inspired me to get into wind sports is one day I was, I was driving out near Baker Beach on the cliff. And I look out, and it's a windy day. And I see head high wind swell stacked to the horizon, as clean as I've ever seen it. Just one roller after another, real short period quarter wave, but just endless. And that totally inspired me. And I, I set that intention, not knowing how, but I was like, man, someday I want to figure out how to ride that. And yet here we are. We're all out there riding these things. And then, you know, the, the tanker waves, it's like this big ship comes through and it all of a sudden it's like, holy cow, this whole other thing of of ways to ride waves and have fun and i've seen them ride these for i don't know how long it goes but from the entrance to the gate to say alcatraz i think it's like two miles or something but it's just the you know the possibilities the fun factor it's it's all fun and i'm super stoked to be a part of it and so thanks so much for watching and i hope this was enjoyable